Greetings, valiant stranger who has just burst into my life. I am the master of this house, Count Dayron Kale, Myriad Mellifluous Monikers Arunde. No need to introduce yourself. I find remembering insignificant details, such as the name of passing acquaintances, such a bore. Wow, bona fide blue bloods and unparalleled aristocracy. All this makes me itch to do something really crass. Ooh, like blow my nose on the curtains. What are you waiting for, my squamous squire? The curtains in this room are velvet, but we have some excellent silk ones with gold thread elsewhere in the house. Take your pick. My soft furnishings are yours to do with as you wish. I'm quite sick of the place, truly. I shall either sell it or burn it to the ground and build a new mansion in its place. Now that we've finished with the niceties, tell me this. How did all those thrice damned demons end up at my soiree? Canabras in ruins. 
Descari. Well, well, well. And I was already lamenting the lack of excitement at my little banquet. Although it must have been tolerable enough if we didn't get notice of a great hulking demon attacking a dragon just outside the window. It seems as though Descari's occasion was altogether more of a crush than mine. If you will pardon the pun. As a child, I had my very own pony, but I always dreamed of having a lamb. I was never allowed one. Sheep were seen as peasant animals, utterly unsuitable for the scion of a noble line. The trauma haunts me to this day. I think of it every time I have roast lamb for dinner. I'm sorry that happened to you. Such a sad story. I had not even the slightest intention of upsetting such a lovely child. I'm not lovely. Some people have even called me a scarecrow before. That's patently absurd. Why, you can't possibly be a scarecrow with a crow following you around. I'm sorry if I failed to sate your curiosity. I loathe talking about myself to people I don't know, even more to those I do know. The only thing worth knowing, aside from the fact that I am highborn and filthy rich, is that I dislike Puritans and demons in equal measure. Well, perhaps demons a tad more. I have no friends here whose untimely demise I would care to mourn. The only alarming thing is how easily all this happened. I don't care for the thought that demons could come calling at my door at any moment. And just think, everyone had so much faith in the wardstones gifted by Iomade's herald, and in the might of our tamed dragon. As if there had been no Dresden or a dozen other routes where the demons overcame every defense. The Arendes are one of the most ancient and noble families in Mendiv. They are related by blood to Queen Galfrey herself. The Count is the last remaining member of his dynasty. The rest all perished around ten years ago. In the tragedy at the family seat, Heaven's Edge, the demons got past the defenses and massacred everyone inside. I thank you for providing your friend with that helpful summary, my lady. I believe I've seen you before with that hilarious buffoon, Horgus Gworm. I sincerely hope you are not engaged in any kind of sordid arrangement with him. The thought of something so splendid in proximity to something so grotesque makes me feel quite ill. You deserve a better fate than that, no doubt. Your civility knows no bounds, Count. I most assuredly do not have any arrangement with Master Worm. Of course, of course, where are my manners? There. You can also poke about the house and claim whatever takes your fancy. Though I imagine some of you already had that in mind. I thank you for the invitation, but I am not quite as desperate as I may seem. At times, it is better to be surrounded by the repugnant mugs of demons than the sour and dour physiognomies of Iomade's righteous paladins. What about my physiognomy? Sour enough for his lordship? Don't worry, another few minutes with the dazzling count here, and it'll sour like weak old milk. What's this? An attractive paladin with a sense of humor? You're a veritable walking scandal. Either way, my mansion is now safe. I have a pair of half-decent guards. I just need to drag them out of the storeroom and bring them to their senses. I ordered them to drink a love potion, you see? For reasons which seemed extremely witty at the time and in the state of inebriation I then found myself in. They can guard the house while the valorous paladins beat back the demon assault. They will beat them back, yes? As regards myself, 
I feel like stretching my legs. I know rudimentary divine spells. I am no friend to demons, and I elevate any society that I deign to grace with my presence. I shall accompany you, only for a short time, of course. I have no desire to remain at the vanguard for a protracted period. What say you, my ephemeral but highly diverting acquaintance? After all, Lord Descari spoiled my party. I now burn with the desire to spoil his. I don't like this guy much at all. Not even because of his personality, but just... I sense something dark about him. I guess thumping him one next time he comes out with more aristocratic witterings is not allowed? All the more reason to take him with us. If we don't kill him, the demons surely will. He has all these friends at his party, and he still looks so lonely. We can take him with us. Maybe it will make him feel better? The Count's presence can only benefit us. I think we should say yes. Huh? What? You're asking about whether to take this boy with you? The question lies outside the bounds of my interest. By the way, did you know that the young scions of noble families often sponsor the research of young scientists? What laudable passion for knowledge. True, the size of their donations bears a direct correlation to the hazardousness of the experiment being conducted. Capital. Good acquaintances that begin and end at just the right moment often leave the most pleasant memories. Wouldn't you say?